Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Chrisom, and I'd like to welcome you to another conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. Uh, I know that last week's topic was canceled because of of the inability to find a good uh, Wi-Fi signal. I think uh, today is going to go much better than that. So thank you for persevering, those who are returning. And uh, I would like to welcome into the program Amelia Santara. Hello, Amelia. Hello, Chrism, and hello, listeners. And as Chrism said, I'm sure today's program will be just amazing with no hitches whatsoever. Full of confidence. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that's right, that's right. Uh, today's topic, I would like to discuss some of what we were going to talk about last week, which was naming and kind of uh, along the lines of a doctrine of signature through the aspect of naming and how that can can change the frequency of your spiritual awareness or your spiritual experience, certainly within the Kundalini. But also, I would like to bring up the understanding of filtration and and how certain filters can be brought into the kundalini awakening experience uh how they can be earned and how they can be useful with regards to living a five sense or living within the this, this current society that we're living in but at the same time having kundalini and have the different skill sets of the kundalini it's not all you know fluffy bunnies and cotton candy when it comes to living with certain skill sets and the kundalini within a five cents ego controlled society. But first, I would like to uh, uh, have Amelia come on and make her announcements. Thank you, Chrism. Well, first of all, I would like to welcome everybody in the chat room. And if you were in the chat room and you have any, have you got your chat room open, Chrism? Um, I, I, I hesitate. I, I hesitate to open it because I'm not sure that I wouldn't get a double a double microphone transmission. Okay, then. Well, in that case, anybody who will speak to me in the chat room live, if you have any question you'd like to ask Chrism or any comments you'd like to make, please type it and I will relate it to him at any stage during the show. And do remember, and this goes for listeners who are... Um, Wants me to phone in as well. It doesn't have to be on the topic that Prism is speaking about today. It can be on any aspect, can't it, Prism, of a Kundalini awakening experience that's or process. That's, that's correct, okay. Amelia. It can be on any topic that, that pertains to your Kundalini awakening experience. So thank you, Amelia. So the, uh, continue. The number Pre- is, yeah, the number is the USA number 347 934 zero zero two six and I would be delighted to take your call and patch you through to prison. So I would also give you the address website you can go to if you want to support the work that Chrism does and if you're in a position to do that. The website is www.ascension dash kundalini dot blogspot dot IE and on the top right hand corner you will find a donate button. So um, all donations are gratefully received with much love, and this is how Chrism is supported um, to continue with the work that he is doing. So thank you very much for doing that if you are in a position to do so. I'm so used to announcing the seminars, Chrism, um, that are now over, and I would really like for Rosalie to announce hers. She has a seminar coming up that she is organizing in Minnesota, in September, um, it's at the last weekend in September, but I'm not sure if Rosemary is online, so maybe we could do that later. Yeah, she, and she, give- she is. She is online, but but first, I'd like to correct that uh, that it's not dot blogspot dot ie. It's blogspot.com. Oh, I apologize. Of course, it is dot com. Can you see the whole address, please? Yes, it's www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. Perfect, perfect. And I'm going to bring Rosemary and Eileen on right now. So right now, hello, Rosemary, and and hello, Eileen, the co-conspirators on the Minnesota Seminar. Welcome. 
Hi. Hello. That's interesting. Do you have both of us at the same time? You can do that? I, I have both yes. of you on at the same time, oh. yes. yes. That's fun. Well, thank you. Yes, and it is both of us. Uh, Eileen has laid some a great uh, work, groundwork, two, three years ago now. People still remember her, and, and she's talking with them and arranging things. We have uh, our, our um, advertising in as many, uh, posting in as many places as we can, and we're working on as well my going here to do uh, to show the film, the documentary Kundalini film, and for discussion. And I did my first one last night, which was a lot of fun, and uh, people interested. I don't know if we will see them, but it is a great way for people to expand their own lives by hearing and seeing the film, and I share with them what I have received, and um, it it was great to see them and to do that last night. An honor. It's an honor and a privilege to do this. Uh, what are the dates of the seminar, Rosemary? September 27th and 28th, a Saturday and a Sunday. And what time will they be? It'll be 9 to 5 on both days. Okay. And my email address, just uh, drop me a, a line and I will get back to you with more information. It's My email address is rosemaryg at usinternet.com. Hello, Eileen. I'm sorry? Hello, how are you? Oh, hello. I do have uh, something to announce, and I oh, sent Rosemary an email just now. Um how are you? In June, we had set up a, a blog talk interview for CRISM to do with uh, this lady, Catherine Taylor, from The Edge magazine in Minneapolis. Uh, she does a regular, actually, she does a couple of shows. So that is still going to happen. And what we just set up today was they will be transcribing that interview and uh, featuring it in the magazine as an interview. And so that's kind of exciting because I, I like reading interviews in uh, these types of magazines. So, Chris, you will, you will be featured, I believe it's in the July issue of The Edge as so, an interview. So, so what you're saying is don't screw it up. <laughs> be, careful what, be careful what you say in your, in your radio interview. <laughs> no, no, no. He, uh, Tim will he'll trans, he'll transcribe it, and uh, he'll, he'll, he does a wonderful job. I've read a number of his interviews, so I'm excited about that. And I, I want to compliment Rosemary. She is doing a fantastic job uh, going around talking to people lining things up. I believe she has seven screenings of the movie set up so far, and I know she's looking to do more. It's wow, just, that is a little... Oh, I just... It's you just go, Rosemary. You go, girl. <laughs> I didn't well, hear you. You're garbling there. You'll have to say it again. You go, Amelia, if you can hear me, I I didn't get anything but jointed, disjointed sounds. He was very clear, and now he's not. Yeah. Okay, Chris, and I can't hear you either. And sometimes... Too many people on might be making a difference. So I'm going to just take you off, Rosemary, and let's yes. see if that makes a difference, okay? Yeah. Okay, we're getting one, two, three, four, so hopefully this is being heard. Um, if anybody in the chat yes, room... Yes, yes, Chris, and that's completely clear again now. So Thank you very yeah, much. Perfect. Okay, well, I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to Eileen and Rosemary, and Amelia Santara for the excellent work that they're doing to help to bring this information into the general awareness of the public. So thank all three of you for, for, the, for the wonderful work that you're doing. And while I'm still able to be heard, hopefully, let's, let's get on with our topic here. The first topic I want to discuss with you is the filtration uh, aspect of the kundalini and i will get into the naming aspect shortly but 
Uh, the first topic of discussion would be the filtration. Filtration uh, is almost the same as, say, putting a partition, maybe a permeable partition, between you and your five cents personality that interacts with other people here in this reality, such as when you're driving, such as when you're walking through town, such as when you're dropping the kids off or picking them up from school or grocery shopping or doing any of the many things that you do in the social environment that we have, you can't always be deluged with, say, telepathy. You don't want to be hearing everybody's thoughts. I know. I know a lot of people think, oh, gosh, I want that. But wanting and having are two very different things. And it can be very, very confusing if you're hearing you know, a hundred jumbled thoughts coming at you at the same time. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to come linear and clear as a telephone call. It can come all at once into a great loud cacophony of information that is coming into your brain. And it, and I say loud, but except you're not hearing it with your ears. You're, you're hearing it with your mind. You're hearing it with the, the, uh, the part of the brain that can that that can pick up telepathic signal and transpose them into sensorial contact within the brain itself and so it can sound just as loud as if you're hearing it but if you can't make out what is happening if you have so many different issues so many different emotions so many different intentions it can be quite confusing and quite disorienting and in order for a person to to have this type of a quality within them, they, you, you have to have a partition or a filter. And this filter basically turns it off to your waking consciousness, except when you choose to focus on it. So, So it's like having a set of headphones on, but you can take them off. But you don't have to take them off with your hands. You don't have to physically lift them off. You can, you can basically just turn it off with your mind and with your will. Your kundalini will hear this. Your kundalini knows this. Your kundalini knows that you don't need to be hearing a hundred different voices while you're driving down the freeway. You don't need to hear what that woman is thinking about her husband while she's shopping in Walmart. You don't need to know what that drug addict is, is, is experiencing as he goes through uh, delirium tremens or some other kind of, of uh, difficult experience due to the drug use. You don't need to know that while you're driving the car. The kundalini knows this, and it, it will put filtration into your experience so that, so that you can live your life without having to be barreled over by all the different uh, thoughts, and sounds and visuals it's not just telepathy you know it's it's waking visions can occur in that way as well and and as many of you who have awakened kundalini and you've had the waking visions you know that they unless you know unless you're getting someone like say paramahansa yogananda floating in on a cloud on say sitting on a carpet and you can kind of go oh yeah okay floating in on a cloud or a carpet okay i get that that's a waking vision. You can do that. But if it's just somebody walking up to you, or worse yet, walking out into the road like, say, a discarnate entity could do, that could be dangerous. Then you'd be breaking for something that nobody else is seeing. You'll be swerving for something that nobody else can sense. And this could cause an accident. This could, go, this could cause injury to yourself and to other people. And so the kundalini will put filtration in. Uh, the one switch, though, and, and, and this is very important, is you have to learn how to control your thoughts. And by controlling your thoughts, you also have to learn how to control your desires and how to control your desire to have a certain attachment or a certain thing occur. So, for instance, I was driving back last night on, a, on Highway 37 in, in uh, I believe that's, Napa County around there, Northern California. And I was explaining to Josephine Smith, who is sitting with me here right now, 
And I was explaining to her, I was saying, hey, look, you know, I mean, this used to be called Blood Alley. And, and immediately, as soon as I called it Blood Alley, and as soon as I looked, you can see some of the discarnate or the, the deceased people that are still on the side of the road. Because when you're dead, time does not flow in such a linear context as it does when you're living. Uh, time in, in, in the dead zone is, is very different than time in the living zone. And so there are people still standing there wondering if they're dead. Uh, as soon as I thought that, boom, I saw them. And then as soon as I saw them, because I'm used to doing this, I just turned the channel and, and switched it off. Well, this will happen to you, to Kundalini. This isn't just something special to Chrism. This will happen to anybody It has. Okay, You need to be aware of filtration and you need to be appreciative of filtration and by being appreciative you need to begin to control how you think how you desire what it is you want to experience while you're doing something as dangerous as say driving a car at that speed there i think it was 55 or 60 miles an hour on a narrow highway surrounded by salt swamps on either side okay so filtration is absolutely crucial when it comes to living in our technological society uh, and having the kundalini awakened gifts and skill sets come to you. You don't necessarily want to, you know, to have psychokinetics when you're not in a position where you can have it safely. Okay, when I lifted a car, you know, uh, the last time I did that, I was, it was, it was a definitely, it was a controlled situation and it was responding to a traffic accident. Okay. So when you do this, when you do this, make sure that you're in a controlled environment and that you're not going to hurt anyone with it. As I've said in some of the other programs, these exalted skills are only to be used in the assistance and the help of others and not in a way that shows you to be a superman or shows you to be you know a, a million times smarter than einstein it's not about uh braggadocio or it's not about uh you know bragging and, and and showing how great and you know like a superhero you might you might actually be with the kundalini because that does come it's it's more about helping people without drawing attention to yourself. Self-aggrandizement means drawing attention to yourself for, for, the, for the aggrandizing of your ego. And this is not what those skills are about. It's a mistake to think it is. So, you know, I have a lot of people, you know, as you might guess, coming up to me or writing to me on the Internet saying, oh, Master Chrisom, I can, I can lift an orange in the air with it just like that movie Star Wars, the guy in Star Wars did, and and I can teleport these things from here to there, and oh my gosh, you know, and he's just really going off about how he can do this and he can do that without really realizing it's just a grace that is allowing him to do that, and the very fact that he's in communication with me, his grace is, is basically asking me to tell him in a five sense format that you need to stop doing that for those reasons. You're not there to show off these skills. And so filtration will also be put in there as well until you can learn to control your thoughts and learn to control your desire, learn to control that eight-year-old ego personality that is controlling your thoughts and desires. It's very important to have this filtration and and sometimes kundalini people will misinterpret the filtration as being an impediment uh, to their special skill sets, which, of course, it would be. You know, it would be a certain, certainly be an impediment, especially if you're being forced to control your thoughts and control your desires from the kundalini itself, which it won't always do for everyone. Sometimes people just need to hurt, learn the, the hard lessons the hard way and, uh, and collect that same karma. However, uh, because I've been given this information to give to you, it doesn't mean that that is the way it is for most of you. For most of you, as you control your thoughts, meaning uh, as I'm driving down Highway 37, 
you know, I mention all the people that have died on this road, and then, boom, I turn it off. I'm no longer thinking about that. I'm no longer looking at that. I'm consciously flicking the switch off. We talk about something else. Okay, it's very important for you kundalini awakened individuals to have this skill set. It's a grace that the kundalini gives. And it does act as an impediment sometimes for, you know, I mean, let me give you an example. If, if uh, you know, you're a, you're a kundalini awakened person and you, you get into a, an argument with another person. And, and yes, it does happen with kundalini awakened people. It will happen. Somebody will just target you and decide to try to make your life miserable and maybe hurt you, push you, punch you, do whatever. Um, most of the time, no, but sometimes it does occur. And what are you going to do? What kind of a rage is it possible for a Kundalini awakened person to fly into? It can be pretty hot. Okay, so it's very, very important that that person does not begin to demonstrate any of their exalted skill sets on that attacker. You never use these things to hurt another person, even if they, you know, even if they've earned it. Okay, and so the kundalini will insert filtration within that skill set so that you can't do it. You couldn't hurt him if you're, uh, if I mean if. If it mattered so much to you to even try, you wouldn't be allowed to hurt that person. And, and for the most part, as I said in other, in other uh, uh, shows, the kundalini will basically change the mind of any individual that may want to come up and, and cause you harm, which is another thing that Josephine and Smith and I talked about yesterday. Yesterday we were at the state capitol, the state capitol of California, which is Sacramento, and we were standing in front of the Sacramento building, and and I was doing a video on how important it is for people who have the awakened kundalini to get in to a political structure, but yet allow the kundalini to control what what they're thinking, what they're doing, what their what their uh, what their ideology is, and how they would begin to initiate those protocols within the kundalini always, and begin to change the way government is practiced here in the United States and in Europe and Asia and South America uh, and Africa and Australia, <laughs> anywhere where there are democratically uh, elected uh, government officials. And so these filtrations serve a very, very important function within the Kundalini awakening equation. Uh, if, if one day you have telepathy and the next day you're walking into a Walmart or a or a downtown of a city that you don't, you know, say you don't usually go into, and all of a sudden it cuts off. All of a sudden you stop having telepathy. All of a sudden you can't hear the same way. You can't hear and feel at the same time the same way. Well, then it's not necessarily being taken away from you. It's just being filtrated. It's being, uh, you know, a a permeable partition is being is being given to you so that you can drive your car safely. You can navigate your way around town safely you can do this without hurting other people with your skill set but also without hurting yourself these filtrations are very 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 important and they include a level of focus increase that a person can have like a a, a level of focused absorption into what they're doing that will not be obscured or disturbed by a person's uh, uh, skill sets. The skill sets themselves pretty much need to stay in the realm of kundalini awakened consciousness control, not the ego control that is that is what we've been raised to to have. If you have any questions or any comments about this, I invite you to call. The number is three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. Three four seven nine three four zero zero two six is the number to call. Uh, this is a live program for the next hour and a half, maybe if I can make it last that long. Um, uh, yeah. So filtration 
allows you to live your five cents life the way you've been living it, but with the caveat of not having so much ego-based um, desires and choices and control of how you live your life. Because once again, I mean, it is very, very important for you to control the way you think. And some people may think, oh, my God, I, I thought this way my whole life. How can I control the way I think? How do I change that? Well, what you do is you examine your thoughts. You examine what it is you're thinking of. Okay? Often kundalini people come from a very, very, very despondent, depressive former life before the kundalini awakened. And they got into a habit of thinking in despondent, depressive terms. And this is no longer the case with the kundalini pretty much, but what you need to understand is that you can change that by just appreciating a flower, by finding levels of gratitude within yourself for whatever is occurring, for the air that you breathe, for having a car that runs. I mean, you know, I'm, you're talking to a, a guy that, you know, I've, I've been struggling with vehicles my whole life. You know, when they're not having engine fires and my kundalini's blowing them out. Uh, you know, it's been, a, it's been a very, very difficult time for me to keep, uh, you know, a good set of four wheels under me. <laughs> so it's, it, you can be, you know, it can be very easy to be depressed about those types of things. And so once again, I'm going to encourage you to find the gratitude in your life. Find places where you can be grateful uh, for those of you who are smokers, you can be grateful for being able to breathe air, fresh, clean, prana-laden air. But you can also be grateful to the uh, to the, the tobacco entity, the spirit of the tobacco, and you know for the sharp focus that it gives you, for the uh, you know the uh, levels of awareness that come with nicotine. Even in our in our you know. In our in our forms of, of self uh, immolation, can we find areas of gratitude? And so, one way that I'm going to suggest that you begin to change your ways of thinking is to increase the level of gratitude that you have in your daily thinking. What are you grateful for? Your skin and your your nerve cells in your skin, you can feel. You can see, you can hear, you can taste, you can smell. These are all great, great, great gifts. And I, if you can't find anything else to be grateful for, start with those. Start with those and step outside. And I don't care how smoggy it is where you live or how beautiful and clean and fresh it is where you live. Go out and fill your lungs. If you're in a smoggy area, well, there's going to be some air there too. <laughs> You know, don't hyperventilate while you're out there. You know, maybe maybe it's better for you in the house. You know, get a get a lot of plants, a lot of indoor plants that can release a lot of oxygen into your into your flat or your apartment or where you live in a big city. Um, or if you're high up in the air in a high rise, you know, your the air is a little cleaner up there. But go out there and breathe and look and see. And be grateful for each of these five senses that, that grace has given you to be able to expand into a kundalini awakening platform with. Okay. Hear, touch, see, smell, taste. Do it all, but do it with gratitude. Because you know what? Not everybody has these senses. Not everybody gets to, 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 to say walk Easily, Not everybody can smell. Not everybody can see. Not everybody can hear. And if you can't smell, then sometimes you can't taste either. So for those of you that have all five senses intact, be grateful for having all five senses intact. And let that begin to change the way you think. And let that begin to change the way you desire. And let that begin to initiate a control about how you think in your daily life. And let that method of 
thought control begin to help you within your kundalini awakening equation. Are you following this, Amelia? Are you following this? Well, are you awake? Uh, yes, yeah. I'm back. <laughs> it takes a while for the, uh, for the mic to work. Yes, I am following it very much so, Chris. Um, yes, I am very much okay. so. Okay, I just, I just wanted to make sure. And so, yeah, yeah, it's very clear. It's very clear. Um, especially what you're saying there about, you know, the gratitude and the five senses. There's probably a couple of things about the filtration that... Um, I'm not 100% sure about. I have had some experience of it myself, but um, I'm just wondering if I, if I can ask you, you know, if something like telepathy, um, telepathy is taken away, is that a form of filtration in the same way as filtration is something that you need to practice? Well, uh, filtration is practiced by thought control. Okay, uh, by controlling your thoughts and your desires to have a certain type of thought. Uh, so by my ch- not, by by my choosing not to think of of the dead people that are standing on the side of of Highway 37, uh, I initiated a thought control sequence that kind of changed the channel, turned mm. it off, and it, it's a it's a bit like making a very very strong separation. Uh, about what it is you choose to think about. Yes, yes. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was reminded of, you know, what you would teach, and which you have um, taught me personally as well, about entities that you don't communicate. And so it's a bit like that, isn't it? You, you, you switch. Is it a bit well, like yeah. that? Yeah, it, it, it's very similar to that. And, in that when you you know when an entity comes to you you know and unless it's engaged in like this willful attack upon you and and, and you really don't have any kind of a, a of recourse in in ignoring it yeah if you happen to see them standing on the side of the road or they they like to come to people when they're in the in the phase between waking and sleeping uh you just ignore it you just go oh that's an entity and you go on with what you were mm. doing Okay, and that is a way of initiating thought control based filtration, which the Kundalini will support. Yes, yes. A long yes. time ago, I, I used to teach something called split viewing, where you, you view with your five senses and then you, 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 you switch the angle of your viewing into the spiritual realm. And, and you view in just the spiritual realm. And then you can, you can go back and forth. You go from the, the, you know, the five sense realm to the spiritual realm, five sense realm to the spiritual realm. Well, with Kundalini, sometimes it'll blend the two. Mm. And that's, what, that's the danger zone there. That's where the filtration needs to come in. That's where the demarcation point between uh, spiritual realm and five sense physical realm, society realm, uh, needs to be uh, sequestered away from each other so that you're not uh, swerving your car to avoid a dead person that happens to be standing in the road. That type of thing. Yeah, yeah. Because I would see colors and shapes and things like that that I pay no, I have to choose to pay no attention to those things. And they're going on, you know? Right, right. And it, yeah, yeah, very, very much the so, same thing. And, Okay. And I'd also the the flashes of light, you know, people will get that flashing light, and and you just have to be able to just partition it off, uh, i.e., filter filter it out, so that the flashing light can still exist, and it, and that is indeed yeah. part of the transformation. And so you certainly don't want to try to stop it, but you don't need to focus your awareness on it because that transformation is going to occur whether you're aware of it or not. Okay. And you need to yes. begin to to let the flashing light happen, let the colors happen, but don't focus on them. Focus on your gratitude. Focus on something else. Focus if you have kids. Focus on your kids. If you, you know, if you have a demanding job, well, then you can focus right back on that demanding job. 
it's a safety it's a safety valve uh it it you know the the ascended skills these these siddic skills are really really wonderful they're beautiful they're great uh they're best understood as tools uh that you have in your new kundalini toolkit that will allow you to help other people not to necessarily to help yourself you know not to say that that doesn't occur but it's that's not the primary focus for for ascended skills uh the ascended skills are to help other people healing um assisting other people uh giving of knowledge certain types of knowledge certain types of grace that can be given within a within any kind of a given situation that your kundalini will allow that uh siddic skill to come through with most mm-hmm. important before you use these skills is of course a, is what we've been discussing is the controlling of the thoughts and how do you like to go about controlling your thoughts amelia <laughs> well, in relation to, we'll say, um, healing and that, um, for me, um, in specific in devotion and surrender is very much an active thing for me, you know. It does initiate, um, I think, what you're speaking about, a control. Um, and just, so, yes, so that certainly would be the case. In relation it's to control, to it's to control over your emotions, though. It's to yes. control over your emotions. And if you've got a real hot emotion coming in, how are you working to control that? Hello? Are you awake? I'm awake. <laughs> <laughs> You're so mean. <laughs> I... I <laughs> Um, well, sometimes I don't, I don't succeed, um, and I respond. So I allow my ego to control it. When I am not allowing my ego to control it, when I, I actually, I'm in, I'm in surrender. I go to that. I practice the safety's prism. You know, I go to immediately to if maybe a place of forgiveness or tolerance and and that sort of thing. You know. Um, surrender um, and that. So depending on what the scenario is. Well, that's good. That's that's really really good. And and for the listeners, you know, the listeners can begin to associate those emotional uh, protocols within the safeties as actual levels of filtration, filtration options that a person can have as they're going through some of the stronger. Uh, blendings of the ego self and the kundalini activated and awakened self. Um, and so, yeah, begin to look at tolerance and forgiveness and patience and surrender and trust and love and happiness and inner joy as certain levels of, of partition or certain levels of filtration that will allow you to have your kundalini experience and have your five sense experience at the same time. Five sense experience being, say, the mundane experience. The mundane experience being that which is only controlled by the five senses. With kundalini, you go from five senses to, say, you know, five gazillion senses and, and you know, understandings that, that, the, that the mental mind and the ego mind and the emotional mind don't really have reference for understanding as of yet. Uh, that, Sometimes that it can be Go ahead. Sometimes it, that can be overwhelming. You know, sometimes it can be like a flood of things. And, and, and so there can be, you know, I suppose for myself, um, I need that, what you're talking about, so that I don't become overwhelmed sometimes by things that are given, that I can respond to that. Um, it's even hard to express it, isn't it? From a cool rather than personality place. Does that yeah. make sense? Well, yeah. Part of it was broken up there through blog talk here, but but yeah. Okay, I think it's, I'll let it go. It's, it's very it's very important to begin to control 
as much as you can the way you think. And I don't, I don't mean like become a control freak over everything that you're thinking. You can have a flow of thoughts, a flow of thoughts that don't necessarily include dead people standing on the side of a highway. How often does that necessarily need to come up in your thought stream during your day as you're getting the kids ready for school? Okay, so, you, you, you know, with, with your thought stream throughout your day, you'll have things naturally coming to your mind. So they'll come, they'll go, they'll come, they'll go, they'll come, they'll go. Uh, within that thought stream during the day and, or during the night, Certain elements of the kundalini will stand forward, but certain elements of the kundalini that may have been standing forward in the past will begin to gently recede. It doesn't mean they're going away. It just means that you're being given filtration. I can choose to look right now. Okay, I'm looking right now, and I can see about five entities in this house right now. Okay, and now I click the channel. I just, I, some people say it's, it's using the amygdala. It's like flipping the amygdala switch. I don't know. You know, I don't have reference for flipping the amygdala. I thought that was kind of a stationary thing. But, hey, you know what I mean? <laughs> what do I know about the amygdala? So um, I, can, I can understand how that might be uh, interpreted that way. But for whatever part of the brain that I'm using, when I, when I make that shift, a shift is being made, a shift in focus, a shift in in the thought stream, the thought stream is typically changing. It doesn't have to change radically, too. It can just change in a gentle, gentle way. You can go from, uh, you know, dead people on the side of the road to, oh, what a beautiful salt marsh we're going by. Okay, or, oh, look at that cool car that just passed me on the left. You know, that, or, well, with you in Ireland, it would be on the other side. But, you know... You, you know, oh, what a, what a beautiful thing my child just said, or you know, engaging people in their in their conversations. Now with telepathy, you know, it can be a little more difficult. You need to just allow the person to have their thought and verbalize their thought. Now, if you're doing, if, if you're ha if the Kundalini is giving you narrow band telepathy, narrow band meaning just a, one or two people at the same time, that's a that's much easier. And you don't necessarily get to go in and comb through their thoughts at all. But you can kind of get an idea of, of what they want to say and how they want to say it and why they're saying it the way they're saying it. You can get into some of the history of it. If there's a lot of, say, if there's a, a large historical, emotional historical signature on that, on that uh, person's thought, well, you'll, you'll get to experience some of that in, and in some cases, you'll also begin to see the pictures, the thought pictures as well. That is a little more difficult. And that you do need to have filtration from when you're driving. Because you don't need to be looking at their thought picture as you're trying to pass the guy going 70 miles an hour. See, this is, this is why I'm bringing up filtration in this conversation. Narrowband telepathy, fairly uh, easy to do. It's not anything that a kundalini person gets to initiate it's not like you get to go okay now i'm going to do narrow band telepathy and i'm going to be able to comb through your emotional thought pictures stand by you know it's, it's, it's not a comic book thing it just happens it just happens and then if you have a if you have broadband telepathy which is like everything then you'll be hearing what the plants are thinking, the birds, the bugs, the paramecium, the virus, the bacteria, the people, uh, the the entities that are both uh, of the physical and of the etheric at the same time, and life forms we have yet to discover on this world, uh, interdimensionals, the whole bit, and you'll get it all at once, and you'll just go, oh, my God, please make it stop. Okay, so narrowband is far preferable to, to broadband, but, you know, it happens both ways. Sometimes you need to experience both in, in order to know the, the polarity parameters of both, the spectrum, you know, the, the heavy end of the spectrum and then the, the opposite end of the spectrum. Uh, and this goes with many of the different skill sets that uh, the Kundalini will bring. Um, lifting a car and not even being able to lift your little finger. Having super strength to no strength. 
having super immunization to having no immunization. Okay. Being able to hold your breath, being able to breathe underwater, and then drowning. Or, you know, uh, you know, trying it without, you know, I mean, it's, it's not the easiest thing to do. You, you, you have to open to what the Kundalini wants to teach you, not necessarily what you want to experience. And this is another reason for filtration to be put in. And this is another reason that the Kundalini will control your levels of filtration. It will control uh, very much so in the early part of the, of the uh, equation, you know, as a person is building towards a spinal sweep, you'll get some sitic skills. As a, after the spinal sweep, uh, the person has that, and wow, you know, all of a sudden you've had communion with God. You know, you are God. You are one with God. You are one with all creation. You are one with everybody. Every dust mote, you are one with every drop in the ocean. You are one with every form of life anywhere in the multiverse. You are at one with. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, skill sets can come from that kind of an experience. And so, once again, because you're living in a corporeal form and you're in the zone of life, not the zone of death, but the zone of life, it's very important for you to control your thoughts so that you can have a positive relationship with many of the different filtration uh, um, designs that will be given to you with those skill sets. And if anybody has any questions about these um, filtration uh, designs that the Kundalini will put upon a person, you can call. Uh, we are broadcasting live. This is Wednesday, May something, May 14th. And this that was uh, that was uh, Josephine Smith. Uh, so this is Wednesday, May 14th, 2014, and it is uh, 3.47 uh, p.m. PST, Pacific Standard Time. You can call 347-934-0026 if you have any kind of a question about your Kundalini Awakening experience or about the topic that I'm talking about right now, which would be Kundalini Awakening Filtration Designs. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of a, of a segue now back into last week's topic that I wanted to talk about uh, last week as we were uh, trying to broadcast from, uh, from, that, um, from the other place. And this is naming. What you go by has a specific signature of recognition or what what in some uh, schools of thought we'll call a doctrine of signature, meaning a doctrine of who you are, how you are, what you are, where you are, as you are. This is referred to as a doctrine of signature. So an orange, an orange has the doctrine of signature of being an orange. Uh, it is it is a fruit from an orange tree. Uh, it is the color orange, and so that's the most obvious doctrine of signature of an orange. Okay, and I'm using orange as an example because you know we call the color orange, but we also call the orange orange because that's where we get the color orange is from the fruit, the citrus. Okay, uh, with Josephine Smith. Now, Josephine, who is sitting right here, right next to me, say hello to everyone, Josephine. Hello, everybody. Hi. And, uh, Josephine, that is kind of a nom de guerre with her. That is kind of a secret name with her. I haven't uh, formally uh, initiated Josephine Smith as her spiritual or her kundalini-oriented name, uh, I mean, you know, we'll, we'll be talking about that later. Uh, but this this change, after you have the kundalini or you begin to enter into the kundalini, some of you will feel compelled to change your name. Um, some of it, some of you will just have it happen. Uh, you'll you'll wake up or you'll you'll be in a dream and and your name will be changed in the dream state, and it'll be changed into something that is is maybe not so familiar to you. 
And you need to feel it out. You need to, to kind of savor the word. So for for Amelia, it was Santara. 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 Can you hear me there, Amelia? Are you awake? Hello? I can hear you, Chris. Yes. You remember this conversation we had, yeah? Yes. You Do you mind if I use you as an example? Please do. Okay. So... The naming, the naming issue, it wasn't so issue. The naming understanding came up between a conversation that Amelia Santara and I had, and and she requested uh, a, a name to be given to her uh, from her teacher, and this is how it will often come to a person is from the teacher uh, that you're using a new name, a spiritual name will be given, and it doesn't have to be, you know. Chog Rum Trung Pa Johannesburg Smith. Okay, it, it it you know it it can be Fred. <laughs> typically, though, I have to say, typically it will be something of a spiritual nature uh, that will come to you from the Kundalini in your teacher or from directly uh, from the Kundalini in you to your conscious self. Typically not wishful thinking. Oh, gosh. I wish I was named John Wayne because I really like his movies. It's not typically coming to a person's way. I'm not going to be absolutist because, you know, the Kundalini can really uh, enjoy giving somebody the name John Wayne in a Kundalini context. So I'm certainly not trying to limit anybody's experience with the naming or the doctrine of signature. But certain syllables, certain consonants, certain vowels connected together allow a certain level of energetic grace to be associated with that person. It's not an accident that Amelia Santara is indeed Amelia Santara. Okay, Tara is a is a very strong Irish uh, uh it has a very strong Irish uh, aff- uh, affectation, would be the word. Uh, sun, uh, meaning uh, that which is, you know, in the heavens, shining down the sun, sun Tara. So in a way, in some, in some way, you can see it as, as, as enlightened Ireland. Okay. Because you have to remember, this is in a Kundalini context. This isn't in a Webster's Dictionary context. And I'm not even sure that Webster even has Tara in there. I haven't looked it up. The whole naming understanding, it is, it is like fitting shoes, spiritual shoes for the person. And, and certain sizes have certain syllables and certain consonants and certain interactions between those those statements that will fit or they won't. And you'll know it almost immediately. You'll know it almost immediately. And um, I know I've spoken with Eileen and Rosemary about uh, also the, the name change thing. And, I, you know, because I'm, I, I haven't got there with them quite yet. Let me bring Eileen on here. Hello, Eileen. Hello, Chris. Did we talked about the name change thing, right? We have a we, little bit, yes. And so are you still interested in that? Yes, I am. So I can call you Fred? <laughs> you can call kidding. me anything you'd like. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So yeah, do you recall our conversations? Um, we just talked about it. We really I don't think we really honed in on anything. We didn't land on it. Any no, any particular name, no. Well, I just want to let you know that we will. We will land Thank on that. And I also want to congratulate you for setting up Tai Chi classes. That's absolutely wonderful. I wanted to fit that in here somewhere, some way. Oh, well, thank you. It's The people are really enjoying it. Well, they're and enjoying I'm, it because of you. Well, well, thank you. I'm enjoying it, too. It's... Uh, it's a uh, a different take. It's a a special form for older people, and even no, it's good. people. 
What? Even people with, with hurt knees? Yes, and it's uh, forms. We cover eight forms. They actually can be done in a chair if needed, or in, so in a wheelchair or on a, a walker. It's it's really it's really nice. I'm I'm really enjoying it. Well, I want okay. to congratulate you. I want to congratulate you for helping others receive that type of service, and you exemplify selfless service within a Kundalini context. So thank you, Eileen, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put you into the blue here. But I did want you to know that I'll be changing. Uh, I'll be offering you different uh, a different name uh, soon. I'm not going to put that out too much longer. And the same goes with Rosemary. Thank, thank you, you, Eileen. Bye. Into the blue. Into the blue. And when we when you hear myself or Amelia saying into the blue here in the uh, in the studio in the uh, uh, virtual studio that uh, Blog Talk gives you. Uh, we get these little touch screen buttons that will, when the when you're in the red, that means you're recording, and when you're in the blue, that means you're not recording. So that's what in the in the blue and in the red means. With regards to the naming, it it, it will resonate with you. It will resonate with your kundalini, and your kundalini will support it. It doesn't mean that you're expected to go out and change your name legally in front of a judge or in front of a magistrate that, that may have that control or authority in whatever country you're in. It just means that between you and your kundalini and perhaps kundalini people, maybe, maybe, as, you, maybe as you work with kundalini people uh, on, on the web, on the Internet, on Facebook, on you know, whatever the networks you like to use, you can use your spiritual name and you become... Uh, uh, recognized by that doctrine of signature. And the doctrine of signature, once again, is how you are, what you are, where you are, when you are, as you are. And uh, Amelia Centara's uh, uh, name is a, is a fairly cohesive example of, of enlightened Ireland. Okay. As in, you can kind of you know, work that together for yourself. Now, if you'd like to call in the program we are this is a live program right now this is uh, May 14 2014 357 p.m. PST Pacific Standard Time the number is 347-934-0026 United States area code 347-934-0026 Amelia do we have anyone in the uh, chat room Still with me there Jerome? yes well, I would like to say hello. Well, Chris Harris is there, and she says hi to you. And Who is it? My son, Chris, Chris Harris. Chris so, Harris from New York. Oh, my gosh. Anybody that wants a good time in New York, you have to contact Chris Harris. She's the best. <laughs> and she lives near she Central Park, too, which is kind of a bonus, I think. So, yeah, <laughs> she okay, does. Chris Harris. And uh, the two of you can go see... Uh, um, hang on, hang on. The Jersey Boys, a very mm-hmm. good musical that's playing right now in, on Broadway. And so, so Chris, have you seen Jersey Boys yet? She's typing. <laughs> um, so we have Fasci in the in the room as well, and we have. Oh, let me Julie. let me see if I can do a Fasci here. Let me see. Hang on, hang on. Hello, Fasci. And how are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, Chris, and that is not remotely as good as Fasty. <laughs> <laughs> Fasty's great. He should be good. Um, sure. Yeah, Chris, Chris says, ha ha, haven't seen the Jersey Boys yet. Oh, you should go see it. It's really a great show. It's really fun. A lot of fun. Amelia took me there. Try to get as close to the stage as you can. Anyway, well, if you yeah. go to the stage, I'm just going to give this tip, seeing as you brought it up. You can ask to go to the, towards the stage because it is restricted vision, they call it, you know. And in actual fact, it's not. You can see the stage beautifully. And the seats are incredibly cheap um, compared to the rest of the theater. We were up in the front row and we got them for, what was it, $30 or something? It was amazing. Um, also, Julie just has made a comment, Chris, and I'm, I'm Hello, reading Julie. it now. Says, 
I would like help with the name change. I have been playing with name changes for quite a long time. I'm on my third one. Ah, well, it's nice, nice to hear the voice of experience here. Um, but now, this is a different kind of a name change. This is a name change that is working with your kundalini, so, so bear that in mind. Um, often, people will have Sanskritish type of, of names only because the Sanskrit uh, consonants and vowels comprise certain prayers and intentions and uh, far more so than say the English language does and so just this is why you get a lot of the you know Shanti or you know Santara Tara is also a Sanskrit term uh, Chrisim Chrisim isn't really Sanskrit I haven't really found that Kundalini kind of just put that one together for me and then I later on discovered it was something to do with christening people or or there is an actual thing called a chrism a chrisming. Um but it can be it can be something that is different from what you normally call yourself and it's something that allows you to begin to in uh to to inculcate a a higher aspect of who you are. You'll always be Julie. You'll always be Julie to your husband and to your to your friends, your family, but to your Kundalini, it will be something else. And so, uh, uh, was that something that Julie wanted to have done? I, I didn't quite get that part, Amelia. Yes, what she's saying is that. Um, let me just see again, and I'll scroll. She's saying she would like some help with the name change. She's been ah. playing with name changes for a while. Now she also has added here. She says, I have to scroll down again. She says, and the ones that she has chosen and her current name are not Sanskrit. So I, I'm, not sure, I, I'm not sure she has settled on one, I think. I mean, it's a bit like Suntara didn't happen in a click. It began as Sundara, meaning beautiful, and then some, suddenly it evolved into Suntara, and there was a lot of meaning in each one of it those was, two was, words. It was, it was it was Aaron. It was Aaron Sundara, wasn't it? Aaron. It began as Aaron Sundara, yeah, yeah, and um, and it evolved in a matter of just a few days. I can't remember exactly, but um, Julie is typing again. No, she has not settled <coughs> on a name yet. So I think that's what she's saying to them. She would if she would like some help with that. I think as okay. a Kundalini name. Well, I will certainly uh, uh, engage with you on that, uh, Julie. Not a problem. I like Fasci's name. He has a very good name, and I, I get Sanskritish uh, uh, emanations from that name. And I, and, and it, and it, it, it has a very uh, good doctrine of signature uh, with him as an individual, as I know him to be. Uh, and so, I'd like to congratulate Fasci. On his name, hmm. whether whether he came across it uh, through through the Kundalini or not, I think it's working well, working well for him. Well, so, Fasti says here, I have one meaning a name, but I would have to speak it, laughing out loud. <laughs> and, uh, so he's not going to type it, is what he's saying. He's no, that's okay. It, that's all know, right. With no, the voice, no, the voice no. would have to be heard. Okay. And Julie also says, um, I took a Wiccan name after my final sweep of Vanilla Butterfly. Oh, a Wiccan name. Hmm. Mm. Well, I Vanilla think, you know, you, <laughs> you know, talking a little bit about Wicca, uh, the Wiccan people, I think, have, a, say, a greater appreciation of Kundalini than than uh, other um <laughs> Spiritual denominations do. Um, there seems there still seems to be a lot of ego involved in the Wiccan pagan format, uh, casting spells, you know, or, or uh, you know, trying to achieve the ego based um, goals through manipulation of uh, magical or etheric sources, which I never ever recommend. But that is that is another uh, another. Uh, experience that people can have here on this world at this time if they're so driven to do so 
as I was going into my kundalini without knowing I was going into my kundalini, I touched on some of those areas and and I immediately kind of felt a it wasn't right for me. It was not something I was going to be successful at, nor as I was being kind of barraged by entities, was it anything that I wanted to really begin to engage in. Uh, but it's not, I'm, I'm certainly not, that's just for me. I'm not saying that all pagan or all Wiccan people are all the same, because they're not. They're as diverse as as, uh, as there are belief systems on, that, on this planet, and that's a lot of belief systems. Uh, you know, you get... Go ahead. Yes, I heard you. Yeah, Ju- Julie, uh, pardon me, Julie says as well, she claims no religious denomination. You know, she's not Wiccan. It was just how it, it unfolded for her. And um, then she says that um, she, was, um, she was searching for something after that, and this was where I was, that was where she was originally led. But she hasn't settled on that that name so she says thank you for um, your offer of help and she really appreciates that absolutely and I want to congratulate her on her uh, obvious progress that she is making uh, with regards to our private teachings so nice going nice going Julie I wonder is that Fashti on the line there about to give us the sounding of his name shall I see (laughs) put him on okay (laughs) <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. I just wanted to say it because <laughs> I alluded to it. Of course. Hello, everyone. It Hello. Is Zef, it is Zef Rendon. Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Zef Rendon. That's yes. very beautiful, actually. I like Fashti better, though. No offense to Zef Rendon. <laughs> I think Fashji in and of itself is a spiritual name. You know, uh, she, indeed she, it is. Teachers. It could be, I don't know what Fash would be in uh, Sanskrit, but I know G is teacher, so. Yes, yes. <laughs> fashion, fashion teacher? Oh, no, please. Please. Not at this point oh. in my life. I think I, I, I just, uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm very happy to, to be able to find my clothes in the morning. It's, <laughs> I can relate. I can relate. <laughs> oh, well, you know, God. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to come on and, and say hello to everyone. And, and well, to that's beautiful, yeah. beautiful, Fasty. Thank you for coming on board. De- definitely. Of course. That. Of course. What a beautiful voice you have too. I just want to say, beautiful, beautiful. Well, let's just you, say it's you, not effective. You, it's it's, it's an the awesome. real thing. Would you do an alm for us right now with that voice? An alm? Alm. Very, very nice. Do it again and I won't do anything. <laughs> Once more. Uh huh. Alm. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful alm. voice. Thank you, Fashti. Thank you. My thank pleasure. you for, thank for pleasure. giving us your name. Thank Blessings you. to all of you. <laughs> thank you, Fashti. Well, I am I am going to, uh, once again, I want to announce uh, that uh, Rosemary is, is having a, a, a Kundalini Awakening Seminar. Rosemary and Eileen are having a Kundalini Awakening Seminar in the city of... Uh, um, well, here I'll just this time I'll put Eileen on here. Go ahead, Eileen. Give us the announcement. Okay, it is in the city of Egan, Egan, Minnesota, e- about you. ten minutes from the airport, the international airport. It is September twenty seventh and twenty eighth, Saturday and Sunday from nine to five each day. Uh, Rosemary is the one to contact, and her email is rosemaryg at usinternet.com. That's rosemaryg at usinternet.com. And we look forward to seeing as many as possible. Uh, There is a pre-registration, so if, you know, someone is ready to go and interested, 
Uh, do contact Rosemary, and I don't have her phone number right now. I can uh, her phone up. number, I, I should probably ask before I give that out, but I have to tell you that uh, Josephine Smith has pre-registered. So the pre-registration is indeed underway, and I, and you'll be there as well, Eileen Laurel, right? Yes, yes. And Rosemary's phone number, you can give it out because she she is using that as a contact. It is it's in our ad. United States it Area six five one four five two three one six one. That's six five one four five two thirty one. Are you on Facebook yet, Eileen? Is there a way that people can... um, Are there other ways that people are on the Internet, you know, that is outside of the locality of Minnesota where people can access the information? No, we don't don't have a Facebook uh, connection yet. We need to uh, look into that. Okay, I have a feeling it's going to start cutting us off, so I'm going to put you in the blue, Eileen. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, I would like to bring Rosemary on. I'm going to put you in the blue, Centara. Rosemary. Yes. Uh, I hope it was okay i gave out your phone number i know i should have asked it's fine i'm i'm fine with that it's it's and and the printed material as eileen is has mentioned and we actually have i wasn't thinking of it as pre-registration but that could be people can telling me they will be there and have gotten the information they need to work that out and we actually have four people oh excellent now i want to go back I'm going to go back outside of the context of our current conversation, and I'm going to go a a little bit into your private experience with the Kundalini. And I want to give you complete authority to say, no, I I do not wish to talk about this. Okay? Okay. You remember your little visitation? Which the last one? Yes. The the black force yes. behind me? Yes. Yes. Well, it was uh, in my sleep and I was waking and I was on my left side and I was saying keep hold of yourself, keep hold of yourself. And there was something behind me and I looked a bit and turned just to and it was it was black and gray shades of black and gray it didn't have a form but it was a force and that's what i said hold on to yourself and it it came that that i think came from my ego and the fear and uh and then the force left but what i learned which i had to take myself to task for what you had, I emailed that to you, and your reply was, what had you not say, I belong to Kundalini, I belong to Chrisom? To Kundalini. Which I have been saying to myself a lot, I have before as well, but just making that a more natural response. To Kundalini. But I was grateful at that for even that much because I, I was literally holding on to myself. To Kundalini, Rosemary. To Kundalini. Mm -hmm. To Kundalini. Well, I wanted wanted you to share that with other people because this kind of goes in line with what I was discussing with earlier with regards to uh, waking visions and how they can come to a person when they are between a waking Mm -hmm. and... Which is exactly when this entity came to you. Now, did you feel that it was nice and loving, and mal- or, or or maybe okay. not? No, no, no. <laughs> okay. No, it was it was scary. It was scary. Okay. Now, was it scary because it was emanating fear, or was it scary because it was something you weren't used to experiencing? I I I knew where my Kundalini told me it was. Uh, it was after me or something. 
It was a challenging entity. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I have to say, get hold of yourself, get hold of yourself, get hold of yourself. It worked for you, didn't it? Yes. Well, that was that. That's yeah. how. Now I understand. You know, you know, I have other teachings for you that that you know pertain to your to to your to your private equation. But I just wanted you to bring that up. So that others can can hear maybe some resonance and some reference for you uh, with regards to when they come in contact with an entity. I mean, you can just by saying, you know, get a hold of yourself, get a hold of yourself, which is kind of like saying, uh, you know, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Yeah. Don't fall into so, fear. Yeah. Chris, it really was keep hold of yourself. Hold on. I think maybe it was hold on to yourself. I think that was it. Well, that's right. That's it. There's nothing yeah, it wrong with was, that. And I, I was, you know, with my arms wrapped around myself like that. I mean, I was doing some physical thing to hold on to myself. That that whatever that was was not going to get me. I've had very similar experiences when I was in my early equation. Um, you know, very similar experiences with regard to uh, somebody who had passed on an old farm. He'd been gored by a bull while he was drinking beer out there with his friends. They got a bit drunk and and, and jokingly took, dared him to go out and play the bullfighter with his Brahma bull and the, uh, the, the or it was a longhorn, something like that. Anyway, the bull literally gored him uh, through his stomach and... Uh, this is back in the 40s, and they drug him into the bedroom, and he basically slowly bled to death in the bed in the bedroom. And then years later, uh, my friend's family bought the ranch, and lo and behold, they had this amazingly uh, physical entity that would come in and pull people's covers off and generally do as much as it could do to scare the heck out of people and then this entity ended up needing to be taken care of in very certain ways. And it was. And, and yet, you know, I got to experience this entity as in its malevolent stage. And it was, you know, and I looked back on it. I go, oh, that's kind of cool. But during the during the period, uh, at, the, at the time, it was kind of challenging to a person's fear controls, shall we say. So I know. I know how you feel when that entity comes up behind you and uh, stands there emanating terror at you. So, well done, Rosemary. Well done. I'm going to put you back in the blue. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. So, there you have it. There you have it. Now, we talked about filtration and we talked about the naming or the doctrine of signature. And I want anybody who is interested in having a kundalini-based name change. Uh, if you wish to go through me with this, then, of course, I am extending an invitation to you right now. This goes for those who are actively listening live in the chat room and in other areas, as well as to those who are listening in the archives in the future. Hello to all of you future people, and thank you for listening. I would like to bring Santara on. Um, I'm, I'm very grateful, Centara, for you and John, your husband, for allowing this program to reach so many people. I want to, to extend my gratitude, my personal gratitude to you and to John for allowing this radio program to exist at all. Thank you. You're welcome, Cousin. I would like to extend my thank yous to Fashji and Rosemary and Eileen and Josephine, who all came on live on the program today. I would like to extend my gratitude to Chris, Chris Harris and Julie and the other people who are listening live here in the chat room and to you future listeners. Uh, once again, if you need any more information about Kundalini Awakening, and you wish to receive it from me, then you can go to the YouTube channel, which is Chrisum O Kundalini, uh, at, on the YouTube network. Or you can just go Chrisum Kundalini. That'll take you there as well. 
You can go to kundaliniawakeningsystems1.com, which is the website. Thank you, Glenola, for the website. You can go to Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 at groups and at Facebook groups. You can go to Kundalini Awakening apostrophe, or not apostrophe, but exclamation point. (laughs) You can go to Kundalini Awakening Systems 2 on Facebook as well. Those three groups that I just mentioned are on the Facebook network. Uh, I would like to thank everyone for listening. I'm cutting this a bit short because I want to make sure that that the broadcastability of, of these little boxes that I'm using right now stay sharp. And so thank you for listening, everyone. Thank you, Amelia Centara. And thank you all.